Hi everyone, Bear from Bear Reads Books. Welcome back to my channel. I'm back in the library today because there's a bunch of noise in the back backyard with big machines and stuff. So, library background, but it's lovely. That's why I built the thing. So, second video of my return. So what we want to talk about today is the best and worst of 2020. I'm, I'm bundling together the best and worst lists of 2020 simply because we're getting late into January and best of 2020 lists are getting really irrelevant. <laughs> so I'm trying to knock off a few of these videos that I should have done a long time ago and, and get them done. So best and worst in the same go. Not ranked. I'm not going to rank them as number one or number 83. Um, but we'll have a short list of just bad books that I really didn't feel I enjoyed at all. And then I'll talk about my best. Let's start with the bad. Let's get the bad out of the way. Now, in my reading travels, after I came off BookTube in August or September or thereabouts, I did have a crack at reading a few of the books on the Booker Prize this year. So I have read a few of the Booker Prize books. I've still got some on my list behind me. You might be able to spot them uh, that I still haven't got to, but they're also in contention for the booktube prize so the ones on my bookshelf here i'll probably get to them as part of the booktube prize anyway but a few i read that i already had read as part of the booktube prize before i really enjoyed i had read kylie reed such a fun age and that was up for contention for booker prize and that was great it's certainly not up there with the best of 2020 but it was good i also read um I also read Diane Cook's The New Wilderness, which I thought was a ripping tale. I thought it was really, really well done about, again, with the, 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 climate, cha the climate change in the world has left the world in desert and then a group of people have been uh, accepted to, to live in a part of the United States that's been cordoned off from the rest of the United States as an experiment of how people might be able to live once the earth becomes inhabitable. So, and that was a really interesting, almost an experiment of a book talking about an experiment of civilization. <laughs> it was really interesting. I, I very much enjoyed it. Again, not right at the very top. Saying that, the other two books that I tried from the Booker Prize before the announcement of the finalists, uh, before the announcement of the winners, I really had problems with. Zitsi Degaremba's This Mournable Body, now this has received some very, very high praise, this mournable body. And I just felt it was a mess. <laughs> really, the plot was all over the place. I, I, at any particular point, I had no idea what was going on. I felt I didn't understand the characters at all. I didn't understand the point of the plot or where we were heading or where we were meant to be going. And it was just a mess. So that was Tsitsi Degaremba's This Mournable Body. I wish I had better to say, I don't want to even tell you tell you the plot. I thoroughly hated that. In fact, I DNF'd it. Uh, and other booktubers don't put DNFs on their best and worst, well, their worst, worst of 2020 lists. I DNF so few books that I'm putting DNFs on my worst of lists. Because I DNFed three books in 2020 two of them uh two of them were booker prize books <laughs> and two of them i'm going to be talking about today uh the second one uh so this model body thoroughly not enjoyed uh this second and again a surprise for the second one was sophie ward's uh love and other thought experiments and again the the premise held great promise and I was kind of enjoying it. I thought the first section was really, really enjoyable. It was an experiment in, in writing as well. It wasn't a normal um, linear type novel and I don't have a problem with that if you want to play around with what the novel is. And I was really enjoying it. And then I think part two, so that's maybe a quarter or a third of the way in, the wheels just completely fell off. And like this mournable body, I had no idea what was going on. Now, say, when I say I had no idea what was going on, I'm sure if I had a persevered, I maybe would have picked the thread up again. So I don't know whether this is a failing in me because a lot of people have enjoyed these books. 
I just didn't. And those two Booker Prize contenders, uh, I had to DNF. So they end up on my worst of 2020 list. Also on the list, some some other surprises. Things that were part of other prizes out there in 2020 or 2019 that I read in 2020 that really did not did not do it for me. And one was surprising. It was Edna O'Brien's, uh, uh, and it was Edna O'Brien's Girl. Um, the book is called Girl by Edna O'Brien. <laughs> and with a, an author of the calibre of Edna O'Brien and a story at its in its summary form seemingly really interesting um, about uh, girls abducted by Boko Haram uh, and the lives that they go through I thought this is just going to be a harrowing read number one and it was but that it was just going to be thoroughly engaging and it wasn't and I was very very disappointed um, some others have said that as well and and it was a surprisingly disappointing read from an author the caliber of Edna O'Brien uh, and also on my worst of list, and I do promise I'm not going to make this worst of list uh, too long, so we've already got three things on there, uh, is another from the Booktube Prize, um, but it made my worst of list, unfortunately, um, was Ghost Wall by Sarah Moss. And again, a slim volume. Sarah Moss seemingly writes very well. It was, you know, it was a simple story about... Oh, hang on, I don't even look, I think I've blocked it from my memory. But again, I just felt the story was scattered to the wind and it just never seemed to come together in, in some sort of meaningful fashion. And the ending left things completely up in the air. And again, it was this, dis, not dystopia, it was uh, it were people that were members of a, of a group who were trying to survive in the wilderness, but they were really just playing at it. They weren't doing it seriously. In fact, the father of the, uh, of the family was the driving force behind this family being part of this experiment, or being part of this group to live sustainably uh, away from civilization. But it had this sense of foreboding, but then the foreboding never arrived. I mean. There could have been a whole stack of things that happened out in the wilderness that were horrible and dark, and but nothing happened. It was just this horrible experiment that went wrong, and just really disappointed me. So that was Sarah Moss's Ghost War. And finally, the other worst of 2020 was Madhuri Vijay's The Far Field. And again, Indian fiction, which is usually so rich in description and colour and and culture that you you just fall into the just the depth of it and just it usually just you usually just let Indian fiction just envelop you. And with Madhuri Vijay, it is a lot of that. It is a lot of um, description of scene, description of people and culture and language. It was just amazingly descriptive, and that bit was great. The story that's meant to bind all that together was absolutely ridiculous. And the main character in The Far Field was such an obnoxious, spoilt brat who learnt absolutely nothing from her experiences traveling through Northern India up to the borderlands of, of Pakistan into Kashmir, that you think, you know, <laughs> what are you here for if you're not here to learn something or to, or to be part of a community, but no, I mean, I would have to describe the entire book for you to get what I'm talking about. But if you read a, a premise for The Far Field, it's about a rich woman who's trying to uh, locate uh, a, a salesperson from Kashmir that used to visit their house when she was a child. And her and her, this man and her, and her wife, this man and her mother, who has since passed, has had this weird relationship with our friends. So he, her mother was friends with this rug seller or cloth seller. So years are, years later, after her mother's died, she goes in search of this person in, in Kashmir um, for no reason, really, uh, only to satisfy her own curiosity uh, about 
the relationship that this man might have had with her mother. Um, and the adventure from Bangalore through into the north of India and up into Kashmir is one of the most ridiculous things I've ever read in literature. There is some, the characters make incredibly poor decisions and they get themselves into completely unnecessary problems and circumstances that magically work themselves out through and without the main character learning anything along the way. She, this main character is completely oblivious to the people around her and the problems that they face every day. And for that reason alone, this was an abomination of a book. <laughs> and it was in the Booktube Prize as well. It, it, got, it got kicked out quite early. Um, but usually, I mean, the descriptions were beautiful. This, this woman can write. But, and, and it was about, a th again, a third of the way through the book where the plot just completely fell apart and it just simply became unbelievable. I think Sean, the book maniac, has said similar things about this book. Oh, man, it was a, it was a horrible thing. That, but that is it for my worst of 2020. Um, even, and so two did not finishes from the Booker Prize and a couple of ones that I finished for, book, for the Booktube Prize because I had to, but they were terrible. Anyway, let's talk about the best. And I've said this already so far this year, but the thing that won for me in 2020 was Australian fiction. Uh, and man, there were some wonderful Australian books this year that were just, that broke my heart and or made me laugh out loud. There's been such good books that I've picked up from an Australian point of view that have really, Anyway, I'm lost for words. Let's do the list and I'll talk about them one at a time. Uh, outside of literary fiction, and I have said this a million times on this channel, but there is a resurgence of great mystery and thriller writing in Australia. And uh, that resurgence has been happening probably since, uh, probably for the last five years. Uh, people like Sarah Bailey and Jane Harper. And now this year, in the last couple of years, there's been a writer called, um, blah, 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 there's been a writer called, um, there's been a writer called Chris Hammer that's come out, an ex-journalist that's now writing uh, mystery novels. And he's now written three in very quick succession. Uh, and I think I read two of them last year. And while they're not literary fiction, they are just a consumable story. They are so much fun and so engaging and so tense I and mean, the tension is perfect in these books. So if you just like a really good mystery, the Australians have just nailed it in the last few years. And, but I have said this over and over and over again on this channel. Um, uh, the, the two most recent Chris Hammer books, uh, one is called Silver and the one after that is called Trust. And they all follow this uh, journalist called Martin Skarsden who is always on the lookout for the next big story, but then he gets tied up in these stories himself and then he gets into all sorts of adventures with him and his girlfriend um, who was part of a big case that he was working on. So it's not a police procedural, but uh, a newspaper man hunting down a story. Really, really good. Chris Hammer, Trust, Silver, and there's another one called Scrublands. Check them out. Uh, also, Australians uh, won a bunch of awards this year and, and it well deserved. Tara June Winch's The Yield. I don't think it was released in 2020. I think it was released in 2019. It just took me a while to get to it. Uh, but in 2020, it won a bunch of awards. Uh, and Tara June Winch has been all over the press in Australia and worldwide talking about the book The Yield. I've spoken about it on this channel before. I think there's a full review back there somewhere. If you want to check it out, please do. Uh, let's see what else the other great Australian stuff. So the other great Australian stuff I read this year, even in non-fiction, I read something uh, like, kind of like a memoir called The Erratics. I think it was released in 2019. I read it in 2020. It won a, real, a reasonable prize in Australia called the Stella Prize. Uh, it's, it was, it's by a, a woman called Vicky Laveau Harvey. And it's really uh, about how we care for the elderly and the difficulty that 
that that brings in caring for age, our aging parents as they as they become physically frail and mentally frail just it was such a heartbreaking book um, if you and it now has gotten a uh, quite a bit of international uh, press and international appeal and, and sales so you may have already heard it and I think lots and lots of activity on Goodreads about uh, the erratics and I think Vicky Laveau Harvey is now releasing another book very soon um, in the same vein but it uh, Vicky Laveau Harvey the erratics spectacular the non-fiction memoir I think you would probably class it as and then you get into just perfect Australian fiction. Um, one of them was Below Deck by Sophie Hardcastle. Uh, now, I'd never heard of Sophie Hardcastle. I think it might have been her first book. Don't quote me on that. I'd have to look it up. And this was, um, this was amazing. I'd never heard of Sophie Hardcastle, but Below Deck tells the story of a woman who, um, instead of taking the next big step in her life toward career and family and you know husband and children and all that sort of stuff she pulls back and she takes a job uh, on a fishing boat just because she likes boats uh, and, so, and something horrible happens on that boat that again makes her retreat and makes her um, move into herself and this so this uh, sexual assault that happens on the boat and then from there it just follows her life and the imagery Oh, the imagery in this thing around the water and around um, the you know, and around color uh, and how it, and how it matches uh, the main character's mood and emotion and, and oh, it's just so good. So if you like, just I mean, it, it's not a mystery. It's just literary fiction. I wouldn't class it as anything other than literary fiction. It's really not a mystery, but. Oh, it's so achingly good. <laughs> That's Sophie Hardcastle, Below Deck. Uh, maybe time for one or two more that are really good. I mean, I read um, one called Islands by Peggy Frew, which was really good. It's like a family drama from an Australian point of view. The Rich Man's House by Andrew McGann, which is kind of... Uh, kind of uh, speculative fiction maybe about a huge big mountain in the southern ocean that grows out of the ocean and it's got all these spooky powers it was really good as well but really uh, the standout for me and the the author that I'm so pleased that I found this year is is Robbie Arnott um, and I, there's a few other booktubers out there that have been uh, that have been spruiking Robbie Arnott for a couple of years now, and I read both of his books in 2020. Uh, I read the second one first because it came out brand new. I saw it in the, in the shops and bought it, and that's called The Rain Heron. And again, I think I did a full review on The Rain Heron, and if I didn't, oh man, I really should have. It's kind of climate fiction, cli-fi, I think you would call it, without being too over the top, but like uh, Sophie Hardcastle's Below Deck, the imagery around nature and around colour and sound are just, just so amazingly good. Um, I'm not going to give you a full plot rundown, but I read both of Robbie Arnott's books in 2020. Uh, the, the newest one being The Rain Heron, which is about a hunt for a mythical creature called the Rain Heron. And again, the earth is failing itself because of climate change. And there's just the, these mythical creatures that everyone just understands are a part of life. And, but humans being what they are, it is up to humans to tame these mythical creatures and to get out of them what they think is necessary for forwarding their own, their own gains for their own advantage. Uh, and The Rain Heron is exactly that. Man, it was, it's a great, great book. His first book from a couple of years ago, which I read after, is called Flames. Uh, and again, it's based in Tasmania, uh, right down the south part of Australia, right down the southern tip of Australia, the southern island of Australia. And Flames tells the story of this almost allegory where the flames, the bushfires, and the, the flames that ravish, ravage um, uh, the forests uh, take on 
uh, a personality of their own, uh, as do other non-human things. Uh, they take on personalities and voices of their own. In, in this, we're talking about flames now. Um, so both of Robbie Arnott's books, I 100% recommend them to you. If you like books uh, about the climate or the, the ecological state we've put ourselves in, so climate fiction, without shoveling it down your throat, uh, they are just allegorical fiction at its absolute best. So if you think of... Um, Things like Lanny, that's allegorical fiction. If you think of uh, books like that, so pushing the boundaries of what novel and storytelling is, is should be, uh, so having a social conscience, then Robbie Arnott is the best in the business, and I'm so glad I discovered him this year. So they are my best books. So I'm, I'm sorry to do it to you, but all of the best ones are Australian ones. <laughs> and I wasn't expecting that because I, I participated in the BookTube Prize. I participated in lots of prize reading and things like that and you know, reading very, very widely in 2020. But by far and away, the best books I saw were, were Australian. And unfortunately, the worst books I saw were ones that were up for prize consideration. <laughs> So that's just the way it goes. Um, but that's it. I hope you've enjoyed this little video about the, my best and worst of 2020. On to new and better things. Let's start talking about what I've read in 2021. And I've already read some amazing things in 2021 that I want to talk to you about. But that's for another day. I've also been allocated my pool, my first pool for fiction in the BookTube Prize for the first round, the Octafinals. So I'd like to talk to you about that too all coming up in the next few days. So wherever you are in the world, please look after yourselves and have a great time and I'll talk to you again soon. Thanks, bye.